Let's solve an example using one of the special angle triangles. For the expression secant of 30, find the exact value and use your calculator to support your answer by finding a decimal approximation. So we want to find the secant of 30. So let's draw our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remembering that opposite the 30 is 1, adjacent to the 30 is the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. We want the secant of 30 degrees. The secant of 30 degrees is either think of it as the, co the reciprocal of cosine, or if you've memorized the secant, it's going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So the hypotenuse over the adjacent, rationalize that denominator, and you get two square roots of three over three. So now, let's go to the calculator and get the approximate value based on the calculator, whereas this is an exact value where we leave it as the square root of three. So on the calculator, what we have is we want to evaluate two times the square root of three, so the second followed by the x squared key, we type in the 3, close the parentheses, and then we want to divide that by 3. Pressing enter gives us 1.1547005.38, and that's our approximation because, of course, this is an irrational number. It continues on forever, and therefore, that value is just an approximation for us. Now, let's look at this next triangle and observe some interesting relationships. Notice that if we look at the sine of angle A, here's angle A right here. And if we look at the sine, the sine would be A over the hypotenuse, which is C. Well, interestingly enough, what if I turn this around and say, Let's look for the cosine of angle B. Here's the cosine of angle B, and notice that cosine is the adjacent side, which would be A, over the hypotenuse, C, which is the same exact value that we got for the sine of A. And the relationship between A and B is that they are complementary. That is to say, that the sine of 90 minus b is equal to the cosine of b. These are called co-functions. And they're co-functions in that they relate to one another, that is the sine and cosine are co-functions, related by the fact that the angles of a right triangle, that are the non-right angles, are complementary. Well, let's continue along and notice that we can find the co-functions for all of the trig functions. And here they are. Cosine of theta is equal to sine of pi over 2 minus theta. Sine of theta is equal to the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And cotan theta is equal to the tangent of theta minus, I'm sorry, tangent of pi over 2 minus theta. We also have tan theta is the cotan of pi over 2 minus theta. Cosecant theta is equal to secant of pi over 2 minus theta. And then finally, the secant of theta is equal to the cosecant of pi over 2 minus theta. In our next example, we will write an expression in terms of a cofunction. So our example then is, Write the expression cosine of pi over 5 in terms of its co-function. So we have cosine of pi over 5. 
And what we know is cosine and sine are cofunctions. So this would be the sine of pi over 2 minus pi over 5. And we need to have a common denominator, which in this case would be 10. So this would be the sine of 5 pi over 10 minus 2 pi over 10. That gives me the sine of 3 pi over 10. So that means that the cosine of pi over 5 will equal the sine of pi, 3 pi over 10. Well, let's use the calculator just to check that, in fact, the cosine of pi over 5 equals the sine of 3 pi over 10. So on the calculator, let me clear that out. Let's first find the cosine of pi over 5. So cosine, and then we put in second pi divided by 5, close the parentheses, hit our enter, and we get 0 0.8090, et cetera. Well, now let's do the sine of 3 pi, so 3 times second pi divided by 10. Close the parentheses, hit enter, and lo and behold, we get 0 0.8090 continuing. So in fact, we, the calculator supports what we found using the cofunction identities. Well, so far we have found the trigonometric function values when it is an acute angle. But what if the angle is greater than or um, greater than 90 degrees, yet less than 180 degrees. Well, then the trigonometric function values can be calculated using their values at the corresponding acute angle, which is called the reference angle. Here's the definition that we will use. Let theta be an angle in standard position. Its reference angle is the acute angle theta prime formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So I have a figure in which I want to look at finding the reference angle in each of the different quadrants. So let's start with quadrant 2. So in quadrant 2, we have the terminal side of the angle right here. And theta is, of course, this blue angle. And so the reference angle, theta prime, would be this angle right here between the terminal side and the closest part of the x-axis. So that's an angle in quadrant 2. What about an angle in quadrant 3? Well, in quadrant 3, here's the terminal side of the angle. And here is my reference angle, again, between the terminal side and the x-axis. Well, the only other one we need to do is, of course, quadrant 4, where we will have that the reference angle is between the terminal side and the closest part of the x-axis. Well, in the next exercise, we will find the exact value of the trig function values by using a reference angle.